A captive air uh, range hood. This is over a, a fryer, and they said it made kind of a clank noise, and then uh, it wouldn't turn on. No air, nothing. First thing I'm noticing: these two mounting bolts are completely fine, but on this side, they're both missing. Second thing I'm noticing is this capacitor is smoking hot. This motor is also smoking hot. Like, <clears throat> if you can't set your hand on it, then it's probably around 200 degrees. Um, so, quite warm. It's a bad sign. These things are controlled by a VFD, variable frequency drive. And before you mess with that, you're supposed to, uh, I think, first turn off the power, if I remember correctly, and then adjust it and then turn it back on. They actually, this is a double pole switch, so they actually shut the neutral off also. Um, as far as I can tell. And then, right now it's in the off position, so we got nothing. Go ahead and turn it on. Let's see, we got 123. So we know what we have power going into the black wire, and the neutral is going through into the VFD control, which I actually shut off entirely, thinking that possibly it was doing something. You can see this is turned all the way down to the off position, um, but the motor is still doing nothing. So we're going to turn it. We're going to turn it back off and turn this thing to high. Turn this back on. And now we got something. So there might have been some kind of lockout, but seeing as how it didn't start spinning the motor, we're now going to check that capacitor. 12 and a half microfarad, 370 volt, and like I said before, it is really hot, but it could just be from the motor. So we're going to go ahead and unplug one of the wires from there and switch this thing into scan mode, which will automatically select into the microfarad reading and make sure that that's 12 and a half. And before you touch capacitor, you always want to short out the terminals to each other and to the ground, like that. The grumpy guys, will, the really technical guys will say that you should use a bleed resistor because it can hurt the capacitor, but nobody in the field uses a bleed resistor. I can tell you that for sure. This is a bleed resistor, it's just a zero ohm bleed resistor. Alright, let me go ahead and check this. 11.69, so I do not think that this problem is related to our capacitor because that is just hardly out of tolerance. That's not enough that it would not start this thing right up and run it. We're going to watch how many amps this thing is drawing. Switch over to amps alternating current. That's a ton of amps. So let's run the VFD to the low setting. Let's see what that yields. If that yields anything promising. The motor just locks up. So I talked to Captain Bear and uh, unfortunately he thinks that it is the motor. I checked on this six pin connector to make sure that this thing is sending out a full 120 volts between the black and the white, which it is. He said they just vary the voltage on those two in order to change the speed of the motor. Um, he couldn't really give me an explanation for why there's three more wires, so that was a little bit uh, concerning. Obviously we've got a ground, we've got the black for the high speed, and we've got the white for the neutral, but something's wrong. It's not, uh, not the variable speed controller because it's putting 120 volts to the motor, so it is a winding in the motor has likely burned out and now it just won't spin. We'll be ordering a new motor and putting it in. I'm going to make sure that I can get the shaft free of the motor itself. Shaft free of the blower wheel. If I can't, then we'll order what's called a power pack. Basically this whole center core gets replaced and uh, then you don't have to worry about getting the old motor off. I think all we have to do is unplug it, take these four little mounting nuts off, which three of them are already off now, and tip this thing up. <laughs> Should be able to just loosen those two set screws and pull that thing off, hopefully. It's 
looks like it might have scraped once, but it's not too much of a problem. It's really dirty. It's nasty. And uh, pull the motor and inspect that, make sure it's fine. That was perfect. After I loosened those set screws, I was able to just grab the motor and pull up. Popped it off. This is that bottom side. You can see that's actually pretty burnt. But the shaft, like the bearings, feel fine. So, I'm thinking that just the dirt and stuff clogged it up until one, one of the windings got too hot and essentially melted or burnt. Too bad. I had the package expedited by those guys and uh, make sure it looks like it's the same motor. Ooh, now that is something I did not notice. When you lift up on that shaft, that feels like a bearing that actually is burnt out. But it's interesting because it, it still turns fine, but look, there should not be that kind of upward travel. So yeah, this motor's Definitely toast. We're back here. Up here, I just uh, put a little bit of oil on the shaft to help it slide back in, and in the future, if they replace this again, to help take it out. It's like really hot down there. I feel bad for those guys. Um, so, we're gonna quickly get this thing shoved in here. Just get it centered there, and then we're just gonna drop the motor straight on. Got it lined up with the two flats. There are two flats on here, and it's just a 5 16 <laughs> your half inch. It's good to go. We just have to plug it in and turn it on. And we got our four nuts down here tightened. That's a very important step. Now we should be able to turn on our variable speed controller. Leave that pretty much on. Kind of right in the medium zone. Flip this on. We got some air movement again. Slinging a lot of grease off that could collected on it in the day that it wasn't running. Feels good though. They are gonna be happy.